The Princess Bride is one of the best movies of all time, in my opinion. And there's a, a funny scene in it that I've linked to in the description where they're looking to storm a castle and uh, Wesley asks, what are our liabilities? What are our assets? And they list the assets and he decides, well, it's hopeless. And he says, well, if only we had a wheel wheelbarrow, that would be something. And uh, and he goes, says, well, don't, don't we have one? And uh, Wesley says, well, why don't you list it among our assets in the first place? Which is interesting, right? It's, I mean, the funny, the reason why it's funny is because no one would have thought that a wheelbarrow would have been an asset. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about in this video today. That uh, when we are thinking through our liabilities and our assets, that there are going to be things that we don't even consider to be an asset that, that actually are. And similarly, um, although this isn't the emphasis for today, uh, there are things that are liabilities that most of us have not really thought through before as liabilities, but they are. So we're going to talk about these things um, using the Princess Bride scene as sort of our jumping off point. It goes to the purpose of the channel, which is um, to call up people to be philosopher kings. And if you want to review the previous channel uh, videos, that would be kind of my recommendation. The purpose of this video is to be a little bit more spontaneous, almost like a blog, um, than what some of the other videos were. And I'm going to provide videos like this um, as we go. They're going to be a little bit less polished, perhaps um, uh, more practical in nature, because uh, my goal here is to actually help people, equip people, because um, Actually, I'll touch on this on the end. One of the things that uh, that we need desperately are many more like-minded people. And those like-minded people need to be prepared. And I can't do it alone. That's the thing that we have to remember. Uh, but I'll return to that. Um, and a, another way of looking at this video is it fits into the three categories listed in the very first video. The three steps to becoming a philosopher king. And these were, to sum up, you need to have a tr transcendental justification, a kingdom to rule over, and the wisdom to rule judiciously. And in practice, the, in practice, these are often intertwined, and in this video, you'll see the beginnings of that. Let me give you a quick bio as to how I've come into all this. Uh, for me, I, I guess you could say it started with 9-11, and I, on that day, one of the many things that I learned was that the government could not or would not protect my family. And that really only left one thing, uh, me. That it would be up to me. And I realized as a young whippersnapper that uh, I was far from positioned to be able to do that adequately. Um, yeah, love, there's there's lots of, lots of uh, reasons, but I mean, probably the biggest reason was at that time in my life, I was just sort of going day by day, uh, thinking that everything would remain the same. Every day would be the same. The status quo would continue forever. Um, and now I know 20 years later that um, you cannot count on the status quo. And certainly by now, you have to understand that yourself, right? We all just lived through the whole COVID fiasco, um, which could have been actually legitimately worse um it could have been a disease more like a um you know weaponized ebola or something that was much more highly contagious etc etc uh but the point is simply that that i'm making here is that you can't count on um tomorrow being like today you just you just can't well anyway um i was launched on that trajectory after 9 11 and it took 15 years for me to disentangle from the rat race and get out on land. And that's one of the things that I'm going to set before you here is that um, as you evaluate your current situation, uh, your liabilities, your assets, so on and so forth, that you, you have to understand that it could take you time to actually get to, to where you want to be. That's why... It's important to get started now we know that um, 
things are looking a little dicey out there if you are watching this video um, it could be because you are just now waking up to the reality that the world is a lot more chaotic than you prefer or maybe you've been in this a long time in which case uh, this might just be review um, or it could be a video if you're more experienced and seasoned uh, that you can share with people who need to get started the important thing is to get started so to get started the first thing you have to do is take stock what are your liabilities what are your assets and be creative and thoughtful don't overlook the wheelbarrow okay for example um, for me there are reasons why um, I needed to get out on land as my my strategy like everyone sort of has a dream of getting out on land if you're kind of especially if you're like the prepper or the homesteader that kind of thing um, that's sort of the go-to thing but uh, there could be reasons why that's not a good strategy for you um, you might for example um, think that uh, your best bet if there's a problem um, is to get away fast you might be highly mobile you might have very few attachments to a community so in that case um, if you can leave an area quickly that's actually an asset so once you've identified that as an asset then you build your plan around that so don't overlook the wheelbarrow all right other things you would ask is um if you haven't got a kingdom where can you get one and this is the strategy part it takes time to, to put these things together um, if you are thinking about all right so what's the going to be the area within my control what is it going to take to get to that area and what do I need to know to maintain and sustain that and if you are watching this you likely sense that time is short so get moving on asking these questions so uh, brains steel and strength that was uh, what is described in the Princess Bride clip that's linked in the description um, for the assets brains steel and strength now these are as good as any um, way to sum up how to be a PK philosopher king um, as any you need the brains you need to steal you need some strength okay we're not going to go into depth into these it would be way too long of a video but let's give you some uh, direction at least number one reduce dependencies increase independencies so look in your life these are the dependencies are going to be the liabilities you know what prevents you from putting into action your plan whatever it is um, are you trapped in a home and underwater on the mortgage well what are you gonna do to get out of that are you prepared in a situation to just simply leave um, the house or is that house going to like like flee it and just let the bank take over while you um, recover from the credit hit later uh, but you know for some reason you think that you're better off some uh, somewhere else um, do you rely on your food from the grocery store alone uh, that you never want to be in that that position but those would be a dependency and independency would be for example a fully paid off reliable automobile just as an example uh, but as soon as you sort of uh, identify those you have to think about just how independent they are so just use to use that example you might have a fully paid off automobile uh, but if the gas pumps don't work uh, well you're kind of out of luck right so that asset has limitations and you have to think about these things first now while you still can uh, one of the other principles is you, you need to understand what your transcendental foundation is. What exactly are you fighting for? You know, what what's the purpose? Are you going for mere survival? Are you um, looking to protect and preserve your family? Are you motivated by the quote common good? Um, I'm always a little bit nervous about people who are <laughs> motivated by that because yeah, they 
but there, there's a place um, place for it you know you can um, disaster relief firefighters police um, I'm glad that there are people who um, desire to do that but you can go too far with it uh, but what is your you have to identify what is your grounding for what you're trying to do because if it's merely survival just as an example then a bug out bag might be all that you need but if you have to seek to the well-being of your family and just for the sake of argument talking about just your immediate family now you have to think about all of their needs too if you've got kids how are they going to cope what a, do they have medical needs are you going to be able to provide for them if um, there's a, a shock to the status quo uh, so answering that question gives you direction all right now let's go through the uh, princess bride model for the philosopher king storming the castle you need brains so here's a tip acquire books hard copies analog don't depend on the internet it might not be there get your books cheap buy them used go to uh, um, dollar bookstores if you got them in your, your area um, there are places to buy books online used even Amazon will often have used books that are far less than uh, uh, the brand new ones you can get them for like four bucks uh, if you do want to get an ebook um, it's not necessarily a bad idea Obviously, the nice thing about having a device like that is it saves space and storage. You don't have to have bookshelves everywhere. But on the other hand, make sure they're fully downloaded and make sure that it's safe from like an EMP or power surge or whatever. Make sure you have a way to charge the reading device. And make sure you get, in either case, get books that are going to be uh, able to help you. So just... I don't know if I told you the books that I have well I'll just give you an example why not um, I have several books on how to make biodiesel I haven't made any biodiesel and I don't have the equipment to, to make it at this point which would be one of the things that I want to acquire but once the internet's down or I really need biodiesel and don't have any other way of getting it at least I have some books that can um, teach me how to do it so um, the internet uh, can't be relied on but analog has its problems too books burn so we gotta be careful with, with your strategy be thoughtful but the point is is even as you grow your repository of information be learning you've got to learn 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 don't wait all right the next on our list steel how will you defend yourself obviously with weapons right so there's a say, saying in the bible not quite appropriate for this context but if you don't have a weapon sell your cloak and buy one but make sure you know how to use it make sure you practice but there are more considerations for defending yourself than just having a weapon. Although I highly encourage you to have a weapon. Um, for example, um, being able to escape and evade is a way to defend yourself. Uh, the ability to hide in plain sight, as it were, to make sure that you go overlooked when um, uh, things are coming down so you're not an attractive target. There's a way to... Make yourself look more harmless or unnoticed completely. Uh, you could decide that uh, your defense will simply be to be fortify your home, like your home is your castle. Well, look, take a look at your your house in a new way, and uh, pick a strategy and find a way to, to fortify it. If you are renting, then maybe that's not going to work for you. But as I said the fact that you're renting could be an asset it means that you can walk away and you're only going to lose the deposit and whatever you have in in your uh, apartment at that time strength so you know in the princess bride it's the big 
Andre the Giant character, right, Fetzig? From uh, our analogy's sake, it's tr to try to establish for yourself a position of strength. Yeah, I would strongly recommend picking up some uh, self-defense skills, uh, MMA, yeah. But I, I'm just, I would be more interested. Um, maybe you know, it's not an either or, I guess. But you know, if you can't move out on land, just as an example, could you find a way to secure access to land? Can you rent an acre somewhere, 15, 20 minutes away from you, that's out in the country? Um, and this can be a place where you experiment, where you learn, where you um, learn how to use that uh, cloak that I referred to in uh, just uh, earlier. Or you can learn how to grow food. You can put, your, put give yourself a nice big garden out there. You, you can't learn how to grow food overnight. It takes practice. Trust me, it takes practice. Uh, that little acre can be a bug out location. If you can't afford it, find some other philosopher kings and uh, go in on it. Or pay someone to help with supplies and food security. Pay someone, a farmer, 50 bucks a month. Um, something like that to, to provide you with produce. You know, think about all the things you're paying monthly for already. Uh, you know, if you've got an Amazon Prime, a Netflix, Hulu, all of them, you might already spend in $250 a month on some of these things. You know, would you give up $50 a month to make sure that you had food if everything hit the fan? So there are creative ways that you can address your problems. You just have to have the imagination, um, take the time to find others with the imagination if you don't have it yourself, and, uh, you know, get started. You want to be able to operate from a position of strength as much as possible. You don't want to be the one in the bread line. Let other people be in the bread line. So, in summary, if you want to storm a castle, if you want to storm a castle in the Princess Bride model, you gotta have brains, steel, strength, and don't forget to mention the wheelbarrow. Yes, but. The other thing about that scene that I think is instructive is that each person in that scene had their own strengths and weaknesses. Princess Buttercup would have been married off if not for the whole team bringing in their own particular assets and working around their liabilities. And the truth is, is that you can try to go it alone. You can try to be the sole philosopher king and, you know, more power to you. It, but I think that if you take a sober look at what your capabilities are going to be on your own, you will realize that you are going to have to make connections with other like-minded people. And it'll be a lot easier to do that now while all the communication lines are up, while you have fuel and you can go travel and meet people and um, lay the groundwork, have some face-to-face -face conversations with people. Um, now is the time to lay the groundwork for those relationships. And I, I would strongly recommend not delaying. I w wouldn't wait another day. Start making those calls, get together, make it happen. All right, so this was a pretty practical video. I hope these ideas can get you started. Uh, like and subscribe. Share this video with people that you think need to hear it. Um, share the channel.